with the legislature on spring break, we take a look at the fall campaigns next on Capitol View. Welcome to Capital View, the weekly program on state government and politics and how it might just affect you. Joining me this week on Capital View is Dave Dahl from WTX Radio. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. And Kent Redfield, Professor Emeritus of Political Science from the University of Illinois Springfield. Welcome, Doctor. Good to be here. Great. Well, uh, as we've said, the leg legislature is on spring break, uh, no doubt resting up from what is, was a tumultuous uh, campaign uh, season in the primaries. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. Is Rauner really toast? Is there any way that's the prevailing notion he can't win after uh, the near shellacking he got by Jeannie Ives? Uh, I think that uh, her finish three points or so south of the governor surprised a lot of folks. Uh, myself included. I think if she did on 30, folks would have been impressed. Uh, is the governor done? What do you think, Kim? Well, if, if you've got unlimited money, which we assume he virtually has, you're, you're, you're never done. He's in a weak position. He, he clearly has problems with his base. Mm -hmm. uh, and to get that back, to make amends with the Genie Ives uh, in terms of that group of voters, uh, he'd have to do some things that would cause him problems with swing voters, moderates in the suburbs. You know, he wants to put back that coalition that allowed him to beat Pat Quinn, but uh, he's really working at cross purposes. Uh, you combine that with the fact that he really doesn't have a record, mm -hmm. and we've got uh, still horrendous budget problems, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, he, he needs to dirty up Pritzker uh, and make him unacceptable. Uh, uh, and uh, he's got enough money to do that, but uh, uh, he, he certainly is, uh, uh, you know, at a, at a you know, severe disadvantage sure. starting out. It almost seems like he created some sort of a, of a, of a, of a uh, picture of himself as the moderate Republican, uh, the, the folks who, someone who can take on some of the conservative ide ideology that has bothered folks in the past, but there's no constituency there anymore. Is that, is that a good way of looking at it or not? I think that if uh, Governor Rauner has a problem, it's not a Pritzker problem, it's not an Ives problem, it's a Rauner problem. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't win, it's his fault. Uh, and coming out of the primary, you know, I thought too, you know, T.O. Hardiman four years ago got 30%, Ives will get, or got 30%, Ives will get 30%. Yeah. <laughs> and until a couple of days uh, before the primary, that's how I still thought, and, and come you know Sunday or Monday, I thought she just might win this thing. Well, she came close. She didn't win, and in a results business, you're the winner, Governor. On to November. So I think uh, I think Professor Redfield is correct. Are you better off than you were four years ago? What are the accomplishments? Where's the momentum? And I think uh, the governor has a lot of questions to answer. That said, he's definitely not toast. He can still win. What do you do if you're what, if you're advising him? What do you tell him to do at this point on? Let's start with the legislature and the budget. Uh, um, what do you tell him to do? On, do you, do you say do that old hardline thing like you did in the past, or do you do, take a different path? Well, I would show him my rate card first because <laughs> I don't give advice away for free, especially to multimillionaire <laughs> or billionaire politicians. But look how well the years without a budget went. It's pretty difficult to say, yeah, that was a win. Um, I keep thinking, how would the governor grade himself, or how would we grade the governor, on how well he works with the General Assembly? You don't have to like him, you do have to work with him. And in most cases, I think Governor Rauner would rate a below average grade. How, how about much of a revolt issue might he have on the Republican caucus? I mean. Uh, I get the sense that folks aren't quite as uh, uh, perhaps scared of them as they might have been in the past. Well, I think a lot of them have seen that uh, there's nothing he can do to them, especially when so many of them are lame ducks. Mm -hmm. And he, has, he didn't even succeed in blowing out Senator McCann here in this area. Mm -hmm. He put up that state trooper. I can't even remember his name now. But his, his, sole, purpose, <laughs> his sole purpose was uh, to... to push the eject button on Senator McCann. He couldn't even do that. And now, you know, the caucus 
frayed and split up last year over the tax thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at governors like Thompson and Edgar, they got along with the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly Quinn and Blagojevich didn't do that much to stand in the General Assembly's way. Mm -hmm. But again, it's as if, and I mentioned this to the governor uh, during the campaign, uh, well, his first campaign appearance in Springfield this fall. He talks like he hasn't been governor all this time. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in there and get Mike mad again, and I'm going to settle his hash and all the tough talk and everything. And I'm thinking, you know, let's find that guy who's been governor and, and oh, wait a second, he's the incumbent. Yeah. yeah. His last direct mail piece he put out with his, you know, how tall is the governor, you know, tall enough to take on Madigan, and you turn it over and here's the platform. You know, I promise to do this, I'm going to do this. I mean, it was all aspirational. There was no listing of all mm -hmm. of the great and wonderful things the governor had done. Now, the Particularly the House Republicans were very dependent on his money mm -hmm. in uh, 2016. And, you know, Rauner and Ken Griffin and Richard Ulan uh, combined to put about $50 million in there that towards House, you know, House and, and some Senate Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, certainly, you know, the, the, the Republicans, you know, are, would still like to have his money, but uh, that's a real dilemma on the budget. I mean, the Democrats could do him a favor by overspending, you know, by going on a spending spree and then sending him something wildly out of, uh, out of balance. But if they give him a tight budget mm -hmm. that, you know, instead of paying off, you know, a, a whatever amount it was, a couple hundred million dollars of debt, you know, give him a tight budget with paying off five, Five hundred million dollars worth of of debt, where you've spent everything and it's really tight. Uh, you know, then then they've got him boxed in. He can't really, ve you know, if he vetoes it, then we're back to a budget crisis. So his, you know, what he does on the budget is going to be dependent on how the how the Democrats. Play. Well, you talk about doing him a favor. What about the thirty-two percent income tax increase that is bringing in money that's making everything go? Uh, if it weren't for that, uh, he'd be presiding over another year of not much going on and so uh, it's almost as if uh, it's almost as if it's a gimmick. Yeah. I think one of the knocks on him has been that he's been too reactive. He's waited for stuff to come to him to give the thumbs up or the thumbs down uh, and to some extent that, that ha a lot of stuff does happen behind closed doors. Can he change that image of himself, particularly the one that was really crystallized when he said I'm not in charge for the folks that are of the camp saying the governor has not been you know out there in front, uh, uh, he's, been, he's been more reactive. Can he turn that around and, and, and paint a picture of himself as a leader as, as opposed to somebody who reacts to what the legislature well, I mean, it was always based on the, the leverage strategy. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to beat these people into submission by holding up the budget. And now if he suddenly becomes, you know, the grand compromiser and, and you know, cut some deals uh, with the Democrats, uh, he looks like a Democrat. And the voters might say, well, gee, why don't we vote for a real Democrat? <laughs> Why weren't you doing this the last three years and stuff? So he's in, you know, he's got a competency problem and he will, you know, you will, he will try to dirty up Pritzker without mm -hmm. any question, time to Bogoyevich. Uh, the Democrats caught a big break in relation to the governor, or Pritzker caught a break when Pat Quinn didn't win the, vo the nomination for attorney yep. general because he would have tied Quinn and Pritzker and Madigan, and it would be, you know, here's the evil cabal that's ruined the state, and they're, you know, they're coming back at you again, and mm -hmm. I'm the only person that can save you sort of thing. So uh, uh, he probably saved, a, you know, he was probably happy to see that Kwame Raoul, uh, you know, got the, the, the nomination for attorney general. Mm -hmm. Or Drury. One of the things we've been <laughs> reading is that mm -hmm. there's a, some turnover in the Rauner campaign staff, and I only say that because four years ago, Rauner, ran an excellent campaign. Yep. He is excellent at campaigning, at presenting himself to an audience, an audience that- And staying might, on message. An audience that doesn't know him, yeah. which <laughs> is why he's outside Springfield so much, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. I, one thing that you really learn in covering people like that is in the campaign, they can be and often are far different than they are in office. Uh, Bruce Rauner has proven to be an excellent campaigner 
And as far as how good a governor he is, well, uh, incomplete. What about his veracity problem? I mean, he's got a reputation now of perhaps not being the most truthful uh, guy on the street. Uh, uh, is that going to be in kind of impediment for him, to him going forward to, to, to present an image of a strong governor who can actually it's, get things it's done? It's a you know, it's a competency and a trust factor, okay. and he, you know, and, and he obviously lost both of those things with the people that voted for uh, for Representative Ives, yeah. and 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 so you know, it's a dilemma with working the, with the legislature, and then when it translates into a campaign, again, if the Prisker people are smart, uh, uh, then they're going to spend all of that money talking an awful lot about uh, the veterans home in Quincy and mm -hmm. going into great detail about the various statements that the governor's made uh, uh, that really don't reflect very well if you're trying to say, you know, I'm competent, I'm in charge, I can get things done. Yeah. I think the three of us, we might all say, hypothetically, the three of us might say the governor's a liar. But is our three opinions, and as much as we're thinking about mm -hmm. these kind of things, reflective of how much all of Illinois is thinking. No, no, but I mean, PolitiFact has, in fact, mm -hmm. give them the pants on fire label. You know, millions of, of Illinoisans would say, what's a PolitiFact? Mm -hmm. It's the thing that arrived in my mailbox a couple <laughs> days before election day. It says, oh, the governor's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but what, you know, if you've got that much money and, and nobody counters it, then, you know, I talked to a person and said, you know, my sister pulled a Republican ballot, and I was a doctor, and she said, well, I wanted to vote against Rauner, but I really couldn't vote for Ives because she's Madigan's favorite Republican. I mean, and so, I mean, she had bought 100% the, the Rauner commercials tying, wow. tying Ives to, uh, uh, to, to Rauner. So, the source uh, tells me some Republican lawmakers bought that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> well, if you did vote for Ives, what do you do in November? Do you stay home or do you say, you know, a uh, uh, rounder is better than the, than the alternative? Well, I wonder how, how dirty those two guys are going to look. I mean, you've got a guy who, I mean, say what you want about rounder, go ahead. And then with Pritzker, you know, the Tribune tried to nail him on the offshore stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I never did that. And then they dug up some other document that showed he did. Yes. And uh, he's got his uh, toilet problem. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got a couple of fully formed, flawed adults, as are we all. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and clearly it seems the strategy is, is to, is to J.B. Pritzker, Mike Madigan, no difference. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're one and the same. Uh, but that hasn't really played, I think, as well. I mean, Rauner's been trying this for, for a, an extended period of time now. And if it, you know, I, it would seem the primary was, was, was perhaps a message saying, you know what, enough folks uh, have issues with you that it's you. It's not. It's not Madigan. Yeah, but I, you know, to play that in this campaign, then we're back to exactly what Dave said, which is, you know, that great political scientist Ronald Reagan, you know, are you better <laughs> off now than you were four years ago. And I it's mean, the economy, stupid. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, Reagan, Reagan, I mean, political scientists call that retrospective voting, where you, mm -hmm. you, make, a, you make a judgment. But now Rauner is the known rather than the unknown. And it makes it more difficult. So the one really rich political outsider businessman who we put in because he wasn't Quinn, instead of him now, we're going to turn to a really rich political outsider billionaire who is not Rauner. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, there's a it's amazing. Yeah, there's a momentum problem and, and a an energy problem, yeah. and that's going to be tough. Even if those I voters come out, they're not going to be as en enthusiastic. Whereas down ballot from Pritzker, you've got an awful lot of Democrats uh, who are very energized and who are going to speak the name Donald Trump gr with great frequency. <laughs> and and so you know the down ballot yeah. and energy in terms of the Democrats. Uh, uh, may benefit, uh, uh, you know, Pritzker as much as as him being at the top of the yeah. ticket flows down ballot. Well, clearly, he knows how to run a campaign or hire folks who do. I mean, given his showing, uh, with the number of, of, of undecideds that fell his way in the late going, that's got to be something that, that that you can point to as as, as giving you a lot of inertia going forward. Well, with the mail and the phone and every other form of advertising, you're sick of this already. 
<laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. For, for and I, and, and Madi I mean, the Madigan issue does cut because mm -hmm. Rauner has done, has spent millions of dollars demonizing the speaker, speaker and tying him to everybody else that's a Democrat. So it certainly would help Pritzker if he could find some way to show independence of the speaker, and and I you know I don't have any great suggestions in in yeah. terms of, of of what that might be, but yeah. but that would certainly be helpful. Yeah. But I mean, Madigan's preferred candidates did pretty well in the primaries, did they not? Yeah, he did pretty well. Yeah, the yeah. organization yeah. is 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 mm -hmm. still functioning. It's it's still about getting you know getting the message to the faithful, getting the faithful yeah. to the polls, and yeah. and they do it very well. Yeah. You had mentioned uh, a rounder dirtying up uh, Pritzker come, come the fall. I mean, he's already made a fairly uh, strong attempt to do that uh, in the primary. It wasn't successful in terms of, 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 of ca causing Pritzker to lose. How much more might be in the tank? I mean, there's always been that kind of suggestion. Well, you know, don't vote for Pritzker because there's these Blagojevich tapes and there's something else there. Um, is, that an, is, that, is that something worth thinking about, or, did they, or would a reasonable person say, look, he's, he's, he's done, he's three, the tapes have been squeezed for everything that they can produce? I wouldn't count out uh, the, the people who don't want Pritzker to win mm -hmm. holding back on a tape or two, especially when, according to Rich Miller and maybe somebody else, the Pritzker people said, we've got no idea what's out there. We mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know, you, you know, they, what surprised me was that that race was called so early. It was uh, just a little after nine or a little before nine. Uh, mm -hmm. Pritzker was the winner, everybody else lost, and uh, totals and highlights in a minute. Yeah, yeah. and he's got to bring, I mean, Pritzker got 45 percent. He, uh, you know, he got a smaller percentage of the Democratic vote than Rauner got of the Republican vote. I mean, now, we made nice on election eve, but he right. still got to, you know, he still got Kennedy voters and Biss voters that, you know, I, I think he's going to be able to to make that argument and to make that sale, but mm -hmm. but he, you know, that that certainly is not you know is not a done deal. Sure, a lot of sharp things said during the Democratic primary that really aren't that easy to take back. Yep. So um, let's uh, talk about a second, if we could, the the Attorney General race. Uh, you, you brought it up. Uh, Ra Kwame Raul made a very very good showing. I mean, uh, uh, the polls were, were were saying it was going to be a lot tighter than it ended up being. Uh, uh, what is it? What do we think about uh, the Harold uh, uh, Raul race in the fall? Is, it, is this going to be a, a squeaker, or, or, or does the organization, does the experience, uh, 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 make this an easier one for uh, for Raul than it might otherwise be? Well, I'm not sure. I've I've got a read on that. As looking at in the Republican primary, it wasn't close at all ever. And mm -hmm. then you had a lot of good candidates in sure. the Democrat side. Yeah. And, you know, the one with the most name recognition, used to be governor, sure. uh, didn't win. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of how uh, Senator Raul plays statewide. He said mm -hmm. he does and talked about visits to Southern Illinois. And mm -hmm. Erica Harold's been campaigning for a very long time. Yeah, sure. and, and Quinn won very strongly in, in, in uh, Downstate. Mm -hmm. I mean, Quinn's ma margin in downstate was about equal to Raul's margin in right. in sh in Cook County mm -hmm. and or, or in Chicago. And then, uh, you know, Raul had enough to get the thirty-five thousand out of suburban Cook and the the mm -hmm. collar counties. Mm -hmm. No, th I mean, it depends on how much money you spend because it's yeah. very hard to get visibility statewide if you're only spending three or four million dollars or even four million dollars or seven in terms of BIS or, or you know, Ives or those candidates yeah. and stuff. So how much is, you know, the governor's dilemma is, am I funding my race? Am I funding Harold's race? Yeah. How much am I funding the House Republicans particularly? Uh, and the Democrats actually are probably in a better fiscal position because you mm -hmm. know Pritzker's going to fund Pritzker right. and uh, uh, the unions and the trial lawyers, health facility people, they pretty much match Rauner's money in 2016 on the mm -hmm. legislative legislative races. So if it's the base vote, Raul wins. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, you know, but, uh, and, and Munger, you know, uh, in a, you know, uh, Mendoza beat Munger in kind of a, even though there was a ton of money put in there, most people didn't know who the candidates right. were or what a comptroller yeah. does. And mm -hmm. so, so I, you know, it, it is again more, you know, all things being equal, which they never are, yeah. you know, Harold has got a, 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 you know, a, a much harder 
you know, hill to climb than, than Mendoza does. I've sure. got to wonder too if Joe Voter is thinking about the governor's race, if he or she have any energy left to even consider the attorney general's race. And mm -hmm. when you look at the the interesting thing from the Illinois Campaign for Political Reform, uh, dollars raised per vote, and uh, Harold was something like uh, two bucks, and Raul was eight bucks, <laughs> or it was the other way around. <laughs> and uh, the uh, governor uh, candidates were in the hundreds. Yeah. The governor yeah. Rauner, more than 200, and uh, Pritzker, more than 100 per vote, yeah. which shows there probably weren't a lot of attorney general ads out there. Yeah. <laughs> The prevailing notion is Trump's going to be a big factor, not only in Illinois, but across the land uh, as we head into these midterms. Is that too facile an answer? I mean, how big a deal is Trump really going to be in Illinois? Um, I, he is, you know, he's not a, he's not a drag down state, I mean, right. deep down state. That's clearly the case. Sure. And, and, but uh, he's provided a lot of general energy for the Democratic side. And mm -hmm. so a lot of this gets to be self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. you know, the, if you think it's going to be a, a Democratic year, then maybe you don't run. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, there are, just, there are lots of things that go into that that, that make a wave happen. Okay. And, and so I, I think the Democrats will have an advantage in terms of, of, of momentum. Uh, uh, but I don't, you know, I, I, it's not, the governor's race isn't going to be a referendum on, on Donald Trump mm -hmm. uh, unless Pritzker's people are, you know, been suddenly, <laughs> you know, become stupid because, you know, it's going to be, it should ought to be a referendum on Governor, Governor, uh, Governor Rauner. But sure. certainly in the congressional races, right. you're going to run, you know, the, six, the one here in the Springfield area, the 13th yeah. uh, district, uh, uh, Lonergan that's running against Representative Davis, the Republican incumbent. Yeah. I mean, she's, it's health care, it's, you know, it, you know, it's, it's. No, it's, yeah, Lonergan is, is I'm, I'm, I'm an Obama person mm -hmm. and I'm proud of it and let's go back. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's certainly going to be a factor in, in, in some of these races, but mm -hmm. so I, I don't think in the governor's race. And she got almost a plurality, and that surprised me, too. Sure. With the Listen, geography of that district. If there is a wave, uh, does Rodney Davis surf it, or does he get subsumed by it? Oh, I, I, this is a district that, when you drew it, was very competitive because yeah. it's got Bloomington, Normal and Champaign and Springfield yep. and Edwardsville and so it's it's a it's it's a compet in the right election with the right candidate a Democrat can win. Now mm -hmm. downstate has shifted, I think, since 2012. You can you can sense a shift and it is more conservative, you know, than than it was. Uh, and so uh, you know, I think he's going to be tough to beat. But I you know, again, if she runs a good campaign, if the national money comes through. Yeah, she certainly, uh, you know, could could end up winning it. Yeah. What other congressional races do you think we should keep an eye on, and particularly in terms of flipping the House? I mean, they need 24 seats now. Well, we're uh, talking about the 12th, the Mike Bost seat, yeah. which uh, Brendan Kelly, he's a pretty aggressive guy. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want him prosecuting me, and I wouldn't want him running against me. <laughs> Fortunately, he's doing neither. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and uh, Rossman up in the 5th. <coughs> now, uh, I... The Demo I don't remember the names, but the Democrats thought that there was a, a woman that was going to win, and she did not win. And so mm -hmm. now they've got a candidate that, that hasn't run for office before, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, they will do, you know, then the 10th, is, which is Lake County, Mark Kirksall district, that's mm -hmm. always competitive. So both sides are going to have to calculate, you know, what does the polling look like? What does the fundraising look like? Because when these, you know, if, if these are key races in mm -hmm. flipping the House, yeah. then, or keeping the House, then it's calculus that's being made, you know, outside of, mm -hmm. outside of Illinois. Yeah. So we could see, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot more action uh, uh, on the congressional races uh, uh, because of the the competitiveness and the the prospect that the Demo you know the Democrats believe they've got a shot, Illinois is one of the places where you could, on paper, you can pick up some seats. Yeah, what are, what are we to make, uh, or is this yesterday's news? The Bernie Sanders voters. I mean, have they been forgotten by the wayside here? But if you were somebody that wanted to feel the burn, what do you do now? I mean, do do, do you stay home? Do you vote for somebody who's wh which which dog do you support? 
You wish there were more of you. Is what yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> well, it was such such big news uh, in, in 2016. Well, these, 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 what's ever happened to that phenomenon, and and and, and can you, it be rekindled? You know, you know, Bisc clearly tried to ride that wave. I mean, right. you know, he was he was going to be on you know, the middle class progressive governor, right. and and so and 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 he you know he ended up running second or third. I don't know. Same really place Bernie yeah. is now. Yeah, <laughs> but you did have uh, you know people. With within there were races in cook county involving the legislature and involving the cook county board mm -hmm. where you had clearly identified progressive candidates mm -hmm. you know chewy garcia is now becoming the the congressman replacing gutierrez and so you know there is a progressive you know f group that is trying to get traction within the democratic party mm -hmm. and that's you know we normally don't think about illinois democrats as being you know, I mean, you know, having this big progressive wing, uh, so they're going that way. Maybe they're getting some traction, and then certainly on the other side, the Republican caucuses in the legislature are being pulled to the right mm -hmm. by Dan Prof, Liberty Principles PAC, uh, the only Opportunity Project, which is uh, a Belzer that who was running, you know, was in the Rauner office for a while <laughs> during mm -hmm. the summer, and uh, and Pat Hughes. And so they've made, you know, uh, the Republican caucus may not be any bigger in terms of the House and the Senate. It's going to be a lot more conservative in terms of, of the way. And that, you know, that makes it harder to get bipartisan agreements in terms of finding a middle. Yeah. Not bigger, more conservative. We'll continue to have the caucus meetings uh, <laughs> in the phone booth over there then. Well, that's, you know, yeah, that's, they, they don't believe that. They believe, you know, we're going to solidify the base and build out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, we're, 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 you know that's, that's to, to be determined. And, and it's always, you know, uphill in, mm -hmm. in Illinois, just given its basic political uh, demographics. Do you think the, the folks, the profs, the policy institutes of the world, uh, where do they stand after this, this primary? Are they stronger or weaker than they were before? Oh, I think they feel like they're stronger. They're gonna, their numbers are up in the House, and they feel like you know, they really put a shot across the governor's bow in yeah. terms of the race. So they're feeling emboldened, whether, you know, whether, whether the, what the reality of that yeah. is, uh, you know, you, you've got to prove that. Yeah. But you know, they're feeling you know, reasonable uh, in terms of you know, what, what, what happened okay. in the primary. And with that, we're out of time. But uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next week on Capitol View.